Hey everybody, Ty here. We're just coming off the coattails of what was an extensive tornado outbreak yesterday evening. Over 100 reports of tornadoes. And the crazy thing is, is we're getting into the morning here where we're expecting a, another big day and we already have a tornado watch in effect over to the west of the city. There is a moderate risk for severe weather today. So we have a 15% half risk of tornadoes along with a 45% chance of hail here as well. Another big day in the works here. We will be going live later this afternoon. Hope you enjoy the forecast videos. Till then, take care and I will see you very soon. Hey everybody, Tom Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well this morning. In case you didn't, in case you might have missed it, yeah, uh, we had a pretty big day yesterday. 214 severe reports, 100 of them now, tornado reports, stretching from Nebraska into Iowa, through Kansas and also in Texas. And the thing is, guess what? We have a moderate risk for today. Very big moderate risk over Oklahoma City, heading towards Wichita Falls, Texas, and heading towards even Southeast Kansas. Wichita is included in that. So could be seeing yet another big day of severe weather ahead here. Just like last night, of course, we'll be going live. So make sure that you have that notification bell on so you can be alerted as to when that stream will start. Crazy thing is also that we have a tornado watch already in effect until 1 p.m. This got issued about 48 minutes ago, actually. So this was while I was making the short, actually. I already see actually a little bit of storm initiation going on here. This is going to continue throughout the day. So we get into the details with this. As far as the model data is concerned, you'll see how things kind of fire up and kind of progresses as we go from that point onward. So this is what we're currently looking at with our storm system. We talked about this a little bit on the stream last night, but this is what our current picture is. This is going to be our storm system that's going to cause our problems today. This is our storm system that caused our problems yesterday. This is heading out. This is a classic case of what you would call a trough ejection. So what ends up happening in a trough ejection is this trough, which was pretty strong, of course, as we all know, is getting booted out basically by this one. Trough ejection or depending on uh, subject matter, hopefully it's not too sore of a subject, trough depiction. If it is a sore one, I understand, been there, done that. Anyway, though, back to the weather here. You, you can see that that trough has been kicked out by this one and this starts to really ramp up as we get into the afternoon and into the evening. The timing of how this ramps up will be telling as to what kind of weather we're expecting to get here. The main thing to make note of here is we're looking at the wind barbs here. The main thing that we're doing is looking at this map, which is a wind map, by the way, is by looking at these wind barbs in their direction. The speed, you can see them indicated on the crosshair here. We're getting up to about 70 knots, so we're getting towards 80, maybe even close to 90 miles per hour at the upper levels of the atmosphere. And what we want to look for is, of course, directional shear. So, okay, let's keep in mind that these winds are pushing southwest to northeast here. Got the wrong color on. But, wait, I got the wrong. Hang on, let's try it again. There we go. But notice how these barbs are going in this direction. What we want to look for, and we're going to do a little something out of left field here. We're going to skip towards the low level jet. And I want you to notice something already. Notice how these wind barbs are pushing more of a north to south motion. That means we have turning of the winds with height. We have directional shear. And also the speed's going to be a little bit different. You want the wind shear at the upper levels to be a little bit higher. I'm not saying that the low level shear can't be incredible too. But when you have an area like this, like let's say 46 knots going north to south like this with 60 or 70, 80 knots going like this, key sign of rotation here for sure in the lower to mid levels of the atmosphere suspect spot when it comes to tornadoes of course now the other thing that we're going to have to keep an eye on of course is towards the mid levels we look for an area of lift through a short wave and we're going to be seeing a lot of that today it's also why i'm pretty confident that we're likely to get these storms to fire here 
they could fire as early as three. I do think that they will get an early mode before then as well, but I really expect things to take off about mid afternoon and maybe going all the way through the evening as well. These short waves are basically these little um, isobars or excuse me, contours that end up having these little ripples in them. Those are your short waves. And as I've said before, they're plentiful across both Oklahoma and Kansas, Missouri as well. So with that in mind, we're going to have to keep an extra close eye on this region here. It's a good reason why they have the moderate risk. There may be some changes leading up to the event on the size of that. It may grow. It may shrink. We'll have to just kind of hammer that out, uh, hash that out from that point. As far as our other parameters, as far as moisture, important part of severe weather, great moisture return. We talked about this on stream last night, and we're going to continue to see that trend throughout the day. Every model's pretty much has been showing this for days now, so it's not really a surprise. So basically a couple other parameters we're going to look at before we get off here and start preparing for the stream is our instability, which is incredibly high. We're getting over over 3,000 joules per kilogram on Cape. Get put in perspective for your threshold number is more so towards a thousand. 3,000 joules per kilogram on Cape is an explosive environment. And like I said, we have plenty of it available. And that's gonna even last into the overnight hours here for a little bit. So like I said, it has the makings of a long day. This is not a shoe in, but it definitely has the look of something that a lot of people should want to pay attention to it could be a very dangerous day ahead i don't like overhyping events but this has a lot of potential at the very least i will say that and there's no denying it now the last thing we're going to do well actually we're going to look at the significant tornado parameter before we do that now one thing i want to make sure that i make clear when looking at this parameter this is mainly based off of storms this is mainly going to be for people that are expecting storms if you see higher values when you're not expecting storms, do not worry about this. But, of course, this is towards our area of interest where we start to see those higher values start to kick up right around 21, 22Z. I'm going to actually go ahead and click a sounding from this over towards Oklahoma. This isn't necessarily a textbook tornado outbreak setup, but definitely something that needs to be monitored very closely parameters look pretty good the wind shear as i said before you can see it with these barbs here you can see how the winds are kind of turning with height and then also the wind shear itself is pretty strong as well like i said the, the signals are definitely there for a pretty significant day like i said no two days are truly the same and while we could see a repeat of yesterday there's also that chance that we may not and all we can do at that point is hope for the best. I really think peak tornado potential will be just a little bit after sunset. So again, make sure that you are heeding your watches and warnings and don't go out looking for the storm unless you are a professional storm chaser. But yeah, those higher values definitely seem to be hanging around in particular over towards Oklahoma and towards southeastern Kansas, Missouri as well. So again, please, please, please make sure you are staying up to date because nocturnal hours are often the most dangerous times for tornadoes. Last but not least now, we'll finally go ahead and take a look at our radar here. You can already see, like I said before, this is gonna be our early storm initiation here. This is why we already have that tornado watch in effect. And like I said, conditions will only begin to improve for severe weather as we go on throughout the day. Any of these areas that have sunlight hitting them, especially I'm concerned about because it's only gonna help make the atmosphere more unstable Hence also why we have such high instability or cape values as we call them. So as we continue to go forward, this line of storm strengthens, this forms an outflow. This, I'm anticipating this forming what's called an outflow boundary for new storms to fire. And these are gonna be the ones that end up looking more significant. Have to be on the watch for the discrete supercells as, as well as the ones that are forming along this line here. I think this is gonna be a key point of interest in the development of tornadoes as we get later into the evening and beyond here so as we continue to go forward into the overnight still seeing really strong storms based off the signals here 
with all hazards possible. I do think eventually we watch this transition into a damaging wind event. So this could be a lengthy, lengthy evening for us here on the channel. Again, make sure you're staying tuned and you are prepared for a long, long stream. But that being said, hope you guys are staying safe, staying weather aware. Again, we'll be here to assist with that. Till then, you guys take care. Have a good rest of your afternoon and morning as well. And I will see you soon. Again, Todd Metalhead Weatherman signing off for now.